friends welcome or welcome back to my channel this is sandra and i make videos all about cyber security i'm having a current technology and work vlogs and today we have a special guest hey a guys. software engineer okay so today's video is going to be kind of giving you guys the verses between software engineers and cybersecurity. so i know we've made previous videos before in the series of SWE versus cyber which i can link below but today is going to be kind of like us convincing you which career you want to choose because i noticed a lot of you in my comments are asking questions about hey i'm in cs but i want to go into cyber or which one do you recommend so hopefully this video will help you out with that so we're basically going to go through a few topics definitely check out the timestamps if you want to see one section over the other but first we're going to start with introductions all right quick recap i've been working since graduation and it's been almost two years my day-to-day -day job is working on full stack applications so i'm a full-time developer and for me, I am currently a cybersecurity analyst. I work as a pen tester, a web application pen tester. I've also been with my current company for the last almost two years, but I've actually been in a rotational program. So I've only been in this specific role for about a year. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna start with is work-life balance, a very spicy, juicy topic. I guess work-life balance really depends on the company. Sure, like I was just gonna say like for software engineers, the work-life balance can really vary based on the company, based on the team, based on the projects. So it really depends. I know people in software engineer who works 60, 80 hours a week. But for me in particular, on most occasions, I would work about 40 to 50 hours a week. And uh, when there are project deadlines, I definitely work a little bit longer, 50 to 60-ish. But overall, I would say the work-life balance is pretty decent considering that the hour you put in is pretty much like no one really micromanaged your hours. It's flexible to a degree that as long as you get your work done. I mean, get your work done is really big, but nowadays everyone's remote, so it's definitely harder to balance the work-life balance. Gotcha. And then do you ever have to work on weekends or like weird um, hours? I mean, I try not to work on the weekends at all. I try to cut off work starting the weekend. But I have when I had the project last summer where the deadline was really strict. It was coming up really fast. So I did work on occasional weekends, not the whole weekends, like half a day on the weekends, just do some homework, do some prep works, making sure everything runs smoothly do some more coding like yeah very rare occasion but disclaimer i just want to let you guys know that these are just our experiences yep. so every company is different like if you work at a smaller company or a bigger company or a smaller team mm -hmm. like these are yeah. all gonna uh, go into those factors but for me as a cybersecurity analyst i mostly work normal hours um my team usually gets on a lot earlier than me i'm um, usually around 8 a.m or like 30 sometimes but for the most part I work your average 40 hours a week okay. and there are a bunch of teams in cybersecurity specifically a lot of the monitoring teams they are the ones that are going to be on call on the weekends and late at night and like at really odd hours but my team doesn't do that so not every single cybersecurity team does that but it's definitely more likely compared to other areas in tech like most likely you're not going to be like someone in data science and having to work on the weekends. Yeah. Um, it's usually when something breaks and then people on the cybersecurity team have to come in and fix it. But yeah, software engineer has different fields. For example, if you are on the site reliability engineer, which is pretty much making sure the website, the application stays online, they might have longer hours, awkward hours to make sure the sites run smoothly and they're like the first line of defense when the site does go down. So next is entry-level experience requirements, skills, or certifications. What did you need to basically get into the field? I would say it's very simple for software. I, I know for your role, like I watch your videos, so it requires like having some certification stuff and it helps. But I, I'm not too familiar with software engineers. I don't really think you need to get any certifications. Yeah. And uh, sometimes having a computer science degree is enough. And other times you don't even need a computer science degree as long as you have relevant experiences. It can be from personal projects, uh, boot camps, self-study, and then proving yourself by either attending coding challenge or conferences, just past the interviewing. Yeah, so I would say the entrance barrier is really low for software engineer. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> I, I think if you want a software engineering role, it's, 
it's easy to get as long as you have the right checklist. Like, you don't really need Do you need, need to... like, internships though? Like, uh, relevant experience? experiences. So, okay. boot camp, personal projects, something that you can showcase for. And once you have your interview, and you just need to perform. And so if someone doesn't have those internships, do you think side projects are kind of equivalent to that? Yeah, relevant experiences are pretty much personal projects. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes having a boot camp, I, I know a lot of people who take boot camps, Same. they don't have any computer science background. They go on the boot camp and they help you build a portfolio that you can present True. to recruiters. True. And I've also heard that boot camps, some of them partner with different companies. Yeah. So it might be easier to get a job through those ones since they kind of have that filter program that hires directly from that boot camp. Um, yeah, for, so for cybersecurity, I think it's pretty similar to software engineering, but when I got my cybersecurity role, I didn't have any previous internship experience. I mostly took a few cybersecurity classes and I had a certification in cybersecurity in, from my school. So it wasn't like a nationally acclaimed certification program, it was just you know, from my school, and that's why I recommend for a lot of you guys to kind of look for those free certification programs online because a lot of times if you're like not ready to take the Security Plus, since it is a big commitment, um, it's easier to take those like little training courses online and put those on your resume to at least like stand out a little bit, even if you don't have that experience. Um, but certifications, of course, the Security Plus, the Network Plus, A Plus, those main three beginner certifications are the ones that employers look for the most. Yeah, honestly, I've seen a lot of people in my comments that say they've had a bachelor's in cybersecurity and then they're trying to get a certification, some kind of CompTIA Security Plus or um, equivalent certification to get their full-time job or to get their first entry-level role. Maybe different like hack-the-box challenges that you've done, but for the most part, it's kind of hard to have like a side project in cybersecurity because you're not necessarily allowed to like hack someone's website. Okay, so the next thing is interviews. How difficult is it to study for? How much prep do you do beforehand? What are the ranges of questions? Uh, that's a good question. It just really depends on the company. And uh, I know for general software engineering, most interview will be technical. Some companies, they care about behavioral, so they throw in the behavioral question in between technical sessions. So, but what you can expect is pretty much get ready to code, whiteboard, uh, online IDE, hacker rank. Make sure you know your algorithms, runtime data structure really well and uh, I know some companies they ask you more higher level questions they ask you what's objective oriented programming like they do like short short wow. questions and uh, yeah it definitely depends on the company so make sure you know which company you're applying to and try to do some research online and see what type of question they ask and uh, it can vary a lot but if you're going for the big tech companies you can expect pretty much all of them to be technical full on coding <laughs> <laughs> and depending on your levels, but most likely if you're looking for a junior level position, they have easier questions in a sense, like they won't be asking you like system design or any higher algorithm courses like dynamic programming, maybe they will, but most likely they won't if you're just straight stretch out of college. You. Yeah, <laughs> stretch, yeah. As long as you can solve it, sometimes it's enough, but it really depends on the interviewer. So. Wait, so um, for these interviews, do you feel like the prep takes a long time? Yeah, like I hear a lot of different things. So it can go anywhere from just like, you know, study the night before, like you've been studying for your exams to all the way that you want to study a month, two months, six months ahead. I have friends who study like five, six months prior to interviewing with a big tech company, like the big force. In order for them to successfully land the interview, they went through extensive studying. It depends on you. It depends on how comfortable you are with the concepts. I think that's definitely a lot more intense than cybersecurity. I mean, personally, I technically only interviewed for two cybersecurity roles. My first one was for an internship, which I did not get. <laughs> and it basically, it was literally like quiz style where they asked me questions like what port number is HTTPS, different things about SSH, and like those very basic ports. Um, I mean, at the time, I didn't know any of them, so I failed that quiz very badly. It was literally like they gave me a piece of paper they gave me 10 minutes to fill it out and then we went through it together. Yeah, Makes that was sense. one of the... <laughs> Cybersecurity. <laughs> one of the worst interviews I've ever had. Basics. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it's definitely good for that. The second interview was mostly all behavioral. I noticed that, I mean, I talked to someone else who's been in the field for a bit longer than me and their questions were also very like mind kind of questions where they asked you 
basically questions for you to think outside of the box from what it seemed like brain um teaser. yeah like brain teasers tell me how many ways you can use this pencil kind of thing like a lot of questions like that that make you think creatively um because they kind of want to see what you can do rather than you know just writing things down with a pencil they want you to come up with creative ideas and yeah i i don't know if i'm the best at that but I know a lot of the interview questions can end up being like that or just behavioral questions. I also made a video on different ways that you can prep for your cybersecurity interviews and I can link that below if you're interested. All right, next thing is career trajectory. If you know exactly what you want to do, for example, if cyber is your passion, then I would say definitely go specialized. I think personally it's harder to go into specialization roles unless you have a lot of experience. So if you want to do cyber, sometimes it's harder to just go straight into cyber. So software engineer, the general software engineer is a good way to start, kickstart your career. But it could be also a pitfall where your first row determines the type of project you will be working on in the future. Like forever? In a sense, because that's what the recruiters see you have been doing. They feel more comfortable hiring you for a similar role. But if you are going to like a bigger company, for example, they are more likely to think that if you can do one thing really well, then they expect you to be able to pick up something fairly easily as well. So they would give you the benefit of the doubt when you want to switch into a more specialized role. So I would say if you don't have like a PhD, you're just like a college grad, if you can get into a specialized role as early as possible, then do that. Like if you already know exactly what you want to do, go for it. Otherwise, I guess it's trickier. So you, you will have to build up a lot of the skills and prove yourself before you can switch and really have a good trajectory. I think the career trajectory for cybersecurity is definitely a lot more like jumping around. I don't know that many people who've been on one team for a very long time. It's usually after two or three years, you kind of look for like a new team that does something completely different. There's not that many like uh, vertical moves. It's not like you're gonna be in one team and then like you're gonna be the manager of that team. Is usually that you get experience from a bunch of different cybersecurity team, you have all that knowledge, and then you're able to create projects using that. But of course, it's really up to you. I mean, I know people who start out in like pen testing and then they go into ethical hacking and then red teaming, um, but most of cybersecurity isn't like that. It's a lot of jumping around and trying different stuff. But of course, the more knowledge that you have about the teams and the company that you're working for, um, the better you're equipped to, you know, mm -hmm. become like a manager or some kind of project owner. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, it's a lot of jumping around to different teams. Yeah, it depends. Like if you want to become a individual contributor or you want to go like the manager check. Individual contributor, software engineer, you can, you can go really, really far. Like you don't need to be able to manage, you can become a really senior developer. Nothing wrong with that. So next thing is job security. How secure be jobs? How secure are software engineering jobs? I would say it depends on once again the, the field. You have the site reliable engineer which making sure the site runs smoothly. And uh, it's definitely trickier I feel like for for that. If uh, if your website goes right into any issues, they might be the first to blame to be blamed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so, but I would say overall, software engineer, I hear like when you make mistakes, like certain company will forgive you. But I also hear things that if you make mistake, like especially if it affects the end user, like you could get punished, like your trajectory could slow down. In the worst occasion, you might also get laid off. So I would say... For a mistake? For like a major mistake, like not oh. small mistake. Like if you make a lot of mistakes that affects your website's performance, for like a period of time affected millions of end users. It's, it's possible like the mistake could be very costly for your company, like you could be fired. But overall, I would say software engineer is relatively secure. The market will always need software engineer, at least yeah. in the near future. I think even during the pandemic, as you can see like tech companies were the ones who were still hiring and uh, mm -hmm. growing really fast. So I think overall the security, job security is definitely very, very good compared to other fields. I would expect the same for cybersecurity, right? But maybe you guys will get fired <laughs> if uh, there's a breach or something. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would kind of say the same thing for cybersecurity because, I mean, even with like the pandemic, I mean, most companies aren't gonna lay off their cybersecurity team because, I mean, if everyone's working from home and online, like our team was the one that set up all the infrastructure, like securely for people to work from home because 
a lot of companies weren't positioned well for that and the infrastructure just didn't exist yeah. to like securely uh, SSH into like from everyone that works in the company. Yeah, I, I think security teams are really important, especially during times of uncertainty, like more pandemic. Hackers. And, yeah, it basically makes hackers want to attack more and that's why cybersecurity teams are more needed. And also I've heard that like cybersecurity teams just don't get laid off as easily. It might just be my company, I don't really know. But from my experience, that is what I've heard. And, and I guess I just don't think that cybersecurity teams would be the first to get laid off if anything super catastrophic happened, like in a company, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like, that's absolutely true. Like you can't afford to get rid of your protectors. <laughs> like you guys need them. Like, and uh, I personally think in the future, cybersecurity will be really, really important. Especially with all the crypto and the data science coming True. Up, uprising. Like Cybersecurity is gonna be key. Work Our last something. topic is: Do you think your work is fun? Do you like going to work every day? Oof, that's a tricky question, you know. Yes. It really depends. <laughs> so I can tell you about my role, and uh, other software engineers can tell you their point of view. But for me personally, I don't mind going to work. I don't mind. Key wording. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like. Sometimes you do feel like you're not making as big of an impact as I want to be and uh, I feel like as a software engineer, not as fulfilling for myself, just coding all day and uh, the impact is not exceptional I feel like, it's, uh, it's good, like I'm building something that people are using but I feel like it's not adding as much of a value as I want to be. So there are different people who might care more about job security, who might care more about like the roles, the perks at work, the co-workers you have, like my co-worker is amazing, like it's a good work environment, but I just want to find more value and impact. But overall, I am making it, but I just wanted to make bigger impact. Do you think that could also change depending on the company you're working at? Yeah, for sure, like if you're working on like a revolutionary technologies, like could be part of it, you know? like new technology for me I think my job is pretty fun um, it really depends though I think for me I personally just enjoy working with people that I like and sometimes it is hard to get that because when I joined this team it was completely virtual I never met my teammates in person so um, that was a little difficult for me because I like to like get to know people and work with different people especially if they're like my teammates but yeah I guess I didn't get that same experience working virtually but Obviously, I'm so grateful that I have a job. And yeah, besides that, I do feel like it's fun depending on what I'm working on. Of course, like every day is different, but if I'm sitting in meetings all day, that's not necessarily what I would prefer. Um, but if I'm like working on something like my assessments, uh, it can make time go by really fast because sometimes I get really absorbed into them. And then especially if I'm working on different projects, uh, like for example, I'm working on this one project where we're basically creating content modules for like different cybersecurity topics. And that one's been really fun just because I'm doing a lot of research and basically creating something from scratch. So those are the kind of things I like getting hands on on. But yeah, the meetings, I don't like as much, but I know that they're necessary. Yeah, I mean, there was a point where I may not have liked what I was doing as much, but now I've come to appreciate it. So I definitely wake up with more purpose now. That's good. I don't feel like I'm laying in bed and I don't want to get up for work. Oh wow. <laughs> Which sounds like the bare minimum for like, a I don't, anyways, I don't mind waking up going to work. Yeah, I, I guess that's the key. <laughs> that's the key KPI. That's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and found it helpful. Definitely let us know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to know or compare about software engineering jobs versus cybersecurity. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. Um, I post videos or we post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye. Just do cyber. <laughs> <laughs>